Every night, hundreds of sea lions come out of the ocean and they come lay on the beach and lay on other flat areas in the town. And on the night that the fireworks went off, the sea lions first expressed great surprise and then fear and then ran back into the ocean. And this is an example of how, although the relationships between the humans and the sea lions are usually okay with some tensions around the edges, occasionally things boil over. And so if the community is going to continue to grow, and if humans are going to live in that same small 3% of the Galapagos that they have, the relationship between humans and non-humans is going to have to improve, and the population is going to have to learn more about the animals that they live with and what could make for better relations. It's important that we try to see how we're affecting these sea lions, and that's exactly where our research comes in, to see if more than just the fireworks, if our presence alone can affect the the behaviors of the sea lions. The Galapagos are really the perfect place to be studying this confluence of community, science, and conservation, and biology, and psychology. They're islands, so that means that the ecosystems are pretty small, and they're also very fragile, and so the impact of humans on the sea lions in these environments are all very noticeable. We've seen sea lions sleeping on the docks, sleeping on fishermen's boats. Fishermen have taken to putting up barbed wire to keep the sea lions off their boat, which of course injures the sea lions. But at the same time, the community of Puerto Becorizzo, because they live with so many of the sea lions and because it's an endangered species, and because the health of the sea lions tells them so much about the health of the ocean, they take the sea lions very personally. So it's a kind of a bit of a love-hate relationship with the sea lions and the community. That's October 4th. You guys collected over 1,200 um, observations. Very impressive. The research project, it's a three-tiered project. We, it's kind of ambitious. We want to actually teach high school students how to be experts on an endangered species of sea lion where they live so that they can contribute to conserving it. We want to study how well it works to teach high school students how to do this. And we want to think more broadly about a model for doing science that meaningfully collaborates with the community. So science that doesn't just look like telling people what they should do or what they should believe, but learning from them and using their work and their insights to better preserve the world. Sea lions are very common in the areas that people inhabit on this island and the community partners who we were working with were seeing some of the conflicts that arise when humans and non-human animals live in very close quarters. And so they came to us with the idea of studying sea lions and with our partners here at Penn, we developed a protocol for studying these animals that we could then teach to the local high school students. So the idea of community partnership was really a part of this project right from the very beginning. There's a school that has an international baccalaureate program with 15 and 16 year olds, and all of the research that's being done is being done by them. We taught them how to do it, but they are twice a week for an hour and a half each time, spending time looking at sea lions, watching what they do, and collecting every bit of the data that we have. Across these sites, there are varying levels of human disturbance. So some are highly disturbed, and some are kind of, kind of set away from town or less disturbed sites. We just hope to show that there are differences, um, kind of in their behavior, kind of in kind of how they interact both with humans and also with other sea lions. Probably the best part, my favorite part about this project is the fact that we're training these local high school students to do this project. So it's not even really us. It's not us coming in doing the project and then saying, here's what we found, here's what you should do. It's them doing all of the research, doing all of the findings, and we want to help them brainstorm ideas that they themselves can kind of work on as a community. So the, the goal is kind of for the students to become the experts and for the students themselves to go to their community and say, this is what we found, these are the problems, we think these are potential solutions. And we think that's just much more powerful than coming from outside researchers.